Jana from the Bath Township Public Library and you are watching Storytime Anytime. So we always start Storytime with a special hello song. And while we sing our hello song, we're gonna do two words in American Sign Language. The first word is gonna be hello. Now to say hello in sign language, you're gonna take your hand, put it to the side of your head and lift it up and away, just like you're saluting. The next word we're gonna do is friends. So you are gonna take your two pointer fingers and they are best friends and they are gonna give each other hugs. Just like that. Are we ready? Here we go. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Can we sing it one more time together? Hello friends, Hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Great job. So our theme for summer reading this year is Adventure Begins at Your Library. And we are having lots of programs and activities and crafts all about camping and having fun in the great outdoors. So today we're gonna read some stories about camping. Have you ever been camping? I love to go camping. So our first story is called A Camping Spree with Mr. McGee. And this is written and illustrated by Chris Van Dusen, who is a fantastic illustrator. He has some really bright, beautiful pictures. Are you ready to listen? Early one morning at 7.03, Mr. McGee and his little dog D, did you see D? Looks like Dee is carrying her food dish. Packed up the can camper and hitched up the load. Hopped in the rambler and then hit the road. They drove to the mountains far from the sea for two nights of camping, possibly three. There's nothing like camping, said Mr. McGee. I know you will love it. Just you wait and see. The views are fantastic. There's hardly a sound. Aside from the wildlife, there's no one around and the air is so sweet. You'll sleep like a log, said Mr. McGee to his small spotted dog. Oh, that is very beautiful, isn't it? A few hours later, they took a sharp right and found a great spot to lay camp for the night. It was high on a hill with a beautiful view of Mount Adams, Mount Lincoln, and Jefferson too. Do you know what those mountains are named after? Hmm, Adams, Lincoln, and Jefferson. Those are actually the names of three of our presidents. But perhaps the most wonderful feature of all was the brook that ran over a steep waterfall. The waterfall? What are Mr. McGee and Dee doing in this picture? I think roasting marshmallows might be my favorite part of camping. Do you like roasting marshmallows? As the embers went out, they felt tired and dozy. And so they climbed in their bunk beds, all comfy and cozy. But while they were falling asleep without care, along came a tumbling, bumbling bear. A kindly old bear whose sight wasn't so clear. He couldn't see far and he couldn't see near, but he could smell marshmallows sticky and sweet. This smell made him hungry and he wanted a treat. They left their marshmallows outside. That is a big rule of camping is you should never just leave food outside. Some foods are not good for animals to eat. He sniffed out the place where the marshmallows lay, but the car and the camper were in the bear's way. Yet that didn't stop that sneaky old snitch. He simply tried squeezing right under the hitch. So the hitch is what attaches the camper to the car that's going to pull it. 
And as he was shimming into the gap, he pushed up the hitch, which let go with a snap. Uh-oh. What do you think's going to happen to the camper now? Oh, no. Now that the camper and car were untied, they started to roll down the rocky hillside. The car bounced away on the old logging road while the camper was heading to where the stream flowed. It flew down the hill in a wild bumpy ride with Dee and McGee sleeping soundly inside. They didn't even wake up. Do you see the raccoon running out of the way? And there's the bear eating all the marshmallows. They were snoring and snoozing, enjoying a dream, when splash went the camper right into the stream. There's our raccoon again. He climbed a tree to stay out of the way. The splash shook the camper. They bumped out of bed. Now what in the world was that, McGee said. And when he looked out and saw where they were, his hair stood on end and so did Dee's fur. His hair sticking straight up and look at Dee's ears are straight up too. They were caught in the rapids, but that wasn't all. They were headed snap dab for the big waterfall. Dee and McGee both started to quiver as faster and faster they headed down river. But just when they thought they'd fall over the edge. Their camper got stuck on a rock at the ledge. So there they were stranded, McGee and his pup, on top of a waterfall 50 feet up. How are they gonna get down? I don't think they can jump out and swim. That's a pretty big jump. Meanwhile, that nearsighted bear from before was searching for one little marshmallow more, when lo and behold, as if out of a dream, he spied something sweet floating over the stream. Hmm, is that a giant marshmallow? But what the bear thought was a marshmallow treat was really the hitch and not something to eat. Remember, it says he cannot see very well. So he thinks the hitch is a marshmallow. The bear was determined to capture his prize. So he jumped in the water right up to his thighs. He splashed through the stream to the edge of the fall and snatched up the trailer hitch, camper and all. Dee felt a tug. McGee heard a knock as the bear pulled the camper right off of the rock. He dragged them both all the way back to the bank when he realized the hitch was not sweet, but quite rank. He spit out the hitch and left in dismay while McGee and Dee's camper again rolled away. It flew down the path with a jolt and a jar and stopped in some bushes right next to the car. Dee popped her head out. McGee looked out too. Had they really stopped rolling? Could it be true? At last, things were quiet and peaceful and still. They hooked up the hitch and drove off down the hill. And on the way home, McGee said to Dee, that trip wasn't quite like I thought it would be. So when they got home with the sky turning red, they decided to camp in the backyard instead. Well, there's probably no bears in their backyard, huh? The end. Our next story is called Camping Day. And this is written by Patricia Lakin and it's illustrated by Scott Nash and it is published by Dial. What shall we do today? Said Sam, Pam, Will, and Jill. Hmm, what do you notice about those names? Sam, Pam. Will and Jill. Can you tell that they rhyme? Sam rhymes with Pam and Will rhymes with Jill. Hmm. Cookout, said Sam. He's holding up a sales flyer. It says special on hot dogs, baked beans, and s'mores. 
Hang out, said Pam. Hmm. What does it look like Pam wants to do? Play some video games at home? Work out, said Will. Camp out, said Jill. You see she's holding the paper like a tent over her head. Yes, said Sam, Pam, Will, and Jill. There they go. Take maps, said Sam. The pack, said Pam. The lights, got some camping lanterns, said Will. And the tent, said Jill. We're off, said Sam, Pam, Will, and Jill. There they have their car all packed. Got a lot of stuff, don't they? They drove and drove and drove and drove. They parked their van beside a grove. North, south, east, west. They picked the trail that looked the best. Who's watching them hike? I see some bunnies and a bird wondering what are they doing in the woods? They hiked through the woods. They climbed hills too. They stopped and sighed. Wow, what a view. Birds, said Sam. Trees, said Pam. These animals look a little scared, don't they? You think they're scared of alligators camping in the woods with them? <laughs> Flowers, said Will. Bees, said Jill. Freeze, said Pam. Sam, Will, and Jill. That's a lot of bees, isn't it? They crossed a stream. They jumped a fence. Let's camp right here and set up our tent. Tie where, said Sam. Peg there, said Pam. Can't see, said Will. Help me, said Jill. They're having a little trouble, aren't they? Finally, said Sam, Pam, Will, and Jill. They got their tent set up. It looks a little crooked, but I think it'll be okay. Let's eat, said Sam. Hot dog, said Pam. And Bean said Will. Oops, toots, said Jill. P.U., said Sam, Pam, Will, and Jill. Toots can be stinky, can't they? S'more, said Sam. More, said Pam. Song, said Will. Story, said Jill. Scary, said Sam, Pam, Will, and Jill. Have you ever told scary stories at night? And gotten too scared? They put out their fire. They put out their light. They shivered in the ink black night. Who snored as Sam? Who roared as Pam? Who growled as Will? Who yowled as Jill? Let's see, said Sam, Pam, Will, and Jill. Wide jaws, cried Sam. Long claws, said Pam. Big paws, cried Will. Loud roar, cried Jill. Dinosaur, cried Sam, Pam, Will, and Jill. Is that a dinosaur? It's her shadow. Let's scram, cried Sam, Pam, Will, and Jill. They scare themselves with their own shadow. They grabbed their things. They ran and ran. They sped away in their small van. Stop, said Sam. Safe, said Pam. Home, said Will. Let's camp, said Jill. And then, <sighs> snored Sam, Pam, Will, and Jill. They decided to camp in their backyard too. Camping outside in your own yard though can be a lot of fun too. The end. Our final story today is a scaredy squirrel story. 
and he is one of my favorite picture book characters. So this is Scary Squirrel Goes Camping, written and illustrated by Melanie Watt, and this is published by Random House. Here we go. Let's find out when Scary Squirrel tries to go camping. Scary Squirrel never goes camping. He'd rather be comfortable inside than risk going out in the rugged wilderness. Besides, setting up camp seems like a lot of trouble. A few troublemakers Scaredy Squirrel is afraid could get too close for comfort. Skunks, mosquitoes, quicksand, the three bears, penguins, and zippers. Scaredy Squirrel is afraid of a lot of things. So he's found a simple way to sit back and enjoy camping from a safe distance. He's bought a new television and he's gonna watch The Joy of Camping on TV. I don't know if that'd be as fun as real camping. Scary Squirrel sets up his new television, but he realizes there's a problem. He needs to plug it in. Reaching the nearest electrical outlet will require major survival skills. A few survival supplies Scary Squirrel needs to pack. A really long extension cord, popsicles, tomato juice, bag of cement, a dictionary, pliers, instant oatmeal, and a fan. Hmm, that seems like an odd collection of things, doesn't it? The wilderness outfit. There's his netted hat to dodge bugs. A penny to bring good luck. Nose plug to bypass nasty odors. Maybe like skunks. A neckerchief. Water wings to stay afloat. Badge to signal peaceful intentions. Walkie talkie to stay connected. Camouflage jacket to blend into the great outdoors. Rubber boots to be quick and dry. The scary squirrel motto. A prepared camper is a happy camper. He definitely looks prepared. And he has no zippers. Remember, he's afraid of zippers. Okay, here is the campground mission. At 5.30, he's gonna leave the comfort zone. 5.31, run through the woods, keep a low profile. 5.41, enter the campground. 5.45, locate electricity. 5.48, plug an extension cord. 5.49, run back to the home base. 5.49, Get comfy and watch the joy of camping. That's the plan. You see, there's the comfort zone. Place walkie-talkie a foot at foot of the tree to stay in contact. Mosquitoes are itching to get you. Fan yourself to blow off these thirsty critters. Keep a nose out for skunks. If sprayed, wash off the stink with gallons of tomato juice. Hmm. So that's why you pack tomato juice. Quicksand will bring you down to avoid the sinking feeling. Mix in cement. So that's what the cement was for. Wherever there are coolers, penguins rule. They're as cold as ice and won't warm up to you. Toss popsicles to occupy their sharp beaks. So there's the popsicles. Wear water wings to stay above it all. You're not out of the woods yet until you get past the three bears. Their weakness, oatmeal. Serve them a quick bowl and do not snooze. Campsites host a zillion zippers. If you get caught, use your pliers to break loose. Nose plugs are a must in this area by the trash and the bathrooms. Note to self, the outlet is too high. Use the dictionary to step higher. And there's the electrical outlet. You see his map and his plan? Do you think he's gonna make it? Oh, first he's gotta get in shape. The rubber boot camp and fitness training chart. Warm up routine, repeat 143 times. If the scaredy promise, a fit squirrel is a safe squirrel. Obstacle course practice run, the scaredy law of the fittest. Run, but never run into trouble. All right, outdoor conditions. The scary rule, if all else fails, take cover and play dead. So he can go if it's sunny 
If it's cloudy, rainy, wind, or snow, he has to wait. If there is a volcano, he has to cancel. The following afternoon, right on schedule, Scaredy Squirrel proceeds toward the campground. There he goes. Oh, Scaredy tugs. He pulls. He loops. The loops. But suddenly, there he goes through the campground with his very, very long extension cord. What's going to happen? A penguin appears! This was not part of the plan. Daddy was going to toss the penguin popsicles. Scaredy Squirrel panics. He spins. He dashes. He bolts. He crashes. He climbs. He splashes. He takes cover. And I think he is on a putt-putt golf course. He plays dead. 30 minutes later, one hour later, two hours later. He's really good at playing dead. Scary Squirrel finally gets the drift. He forgets all about the skunks, mosquitoes, the quicksand, three bears, penguins, and zippers. The wilderness isn't meant to be seen from afar. It's meant to be enjoyed up close. Scarity breathes the fresh air, savors roasted marshmallows, gazes up at the stars, gathers pine cones, listens to songs, and gets comfortable. Looks like he's enjoying camping now. I do see a skunk tail, though. Better watch out for that. Early the next morning, Scary Squirrel plugs in his extension cord and follows it back home. This wild adventure has inspired him to approach camping differently. Here he's going to plug in his TV. P.S. Some things are worth the trouble. He plugged in a toaster and is now making s'mores on top of his tree. <laughs> the end. So since we read stories about camping today, we're going to actually do an action song that I learned way back when I was in summer camp. So not only is this a really fun song to sing and it's got lots of silly sounds and silly animals, it's a great song for little kids to practice phonological awareness. Now phonological awareness is the ability to break words into individual sounds. And kids are going to need this skill when they're reading, learning to read and needing to sound out words. So by practicing kind of making some silly sounds, it's a great way to help your child get ready to read. Are we ready? So this song starts out, we're going to be bears. So can you get out some big bear claws? Maybe do a big mean bear face. Are we ready? Here we go. Grr, grr, went the big brown bear one day. Grr, grr, went the big brown bear. Grr, grr, went the big brown bear one day, and they all went grr, grr, grr. But we know bears go huggy, huggy, hug, huggy, huggy, hug, huggy, huggy, hug. We know bears go huggy, huggy, hug. They don't go grr, grr, grr. All right, the next animal we're going to do is a fish. Make a fish with your hands, and our fish is gonna swim and go blub blub. Are we ready? Blub blub went the little blue fish one day. Blub blub went the little blue fish. Blub blub went the little blue fish one day, and they all went blub blub blub. But we know fish go kissy kissy kiss, kissy kissy kiss. Kissy, kissy, kiss. We know fish go kissy, kissy, kiss. They don't go blub, blub, blub. Mm, what's another animal we could do? Well, when I first learned this song, the first animal you do is a little green frog. And the little green frog is very silly. And he's going to go, mm, eh. Can you do that with me? Go, mm, eh. Here we go. Mm, eh, went the little green frog one day. Mm, eh, went the little green frog. 
mm, eh, went the little green frog one day and they all went mm, mm, eh. But we know frogs go sha na 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 na, sha na 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 na, sha na 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 na. We know frogs go sha na 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 na, they don't go mm, mm, eh. Now you can see, you can do lots of other animals and make up your own silly sounds and motions. Well, story time is almost over. The only thing we have left to do is to sing our goodbye song, which is a lot like our hello song. But instead of saying hello in American Sign Language, we're gonna say goodbye. You do that, you put your hand up and wave goodbye. Do you remember friends? Our two pointer fingers, our best friends, and they're gonna give each other hugs. Are you ready? Here we go. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Can you sing it one more time? Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching Storytime Anytime, and don't forget to come to the library this summer and sign up for our summer reading program. We have lots of fun prizes you can win and lots of really exciting activities going on. Bye!